Hello everyone and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. I'm going to try and replicate this photo that uh, my husband took of me when we were uh, visiting in Italy last fall. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. I have hopes but I have doubts as well. So I have my piece of paper in landscape position and sorry in portrait position and um, I'm going to start off with the background first as always. So in my picture it has this really beautiful baby blue for the sky and it looks like it almost reaches the halfway point. I'm not even bothering with a clear wash first because um, I want my colors to be more intense. And by the way, I've taped the borders of my piece of paper, uh, but you don't have to. I usually don't, but I've started doing it in recent videos. And then the bottom looks like it's uh, more of a yellowish green. I guess it was starting to get cold, so the green wasn't as bright and beautiful anymore. So I'm going to paint that on and I'm going to try and merge these two together seamlessly. Not really sure what happened in the top corner here. I'm just going over that again. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry and then we'll paint on another layer. So again, in my photo, the top has this really intense blue. So I'm really trying to, I don't know why there's black on my brush that's coming off. It's not ideal. Because um, it's making this blue a lot darker than I want it to be. So I'm just trying to mix it out, like blend it out. Because I just want it to be super intense at the top. Not so much at the bottom. Um, and then I'm just grabbing my greens because I want to make my green more intense as well as it is in the picture. And then fade it out like so. All right, that's all right. Um, so we're going to let this completely dry and then we'll move on to the next step. So when that's dry, I'm going to start with my green again because in my photo it kind of slopes, like there's a very abrupt line of, of the field where it starts sloping down. And you know, that's probably because it's a cliff edge. Um, I'm just mixing a little bit more like of a yellow pigment into this because the grass looks like it's kind of dying. So it kind of slopes like this downwards and then goes off like that. Um, I used to have this green that I really liked that just was so versatile and I ran out of it. And I have no idea what kind of green it was and you guys are gonna be like I told you so this is why we've been asking for precise color names well yep this is one of those times where I totally could have used it uh, but anyways so I've got my line there and what I'm gonna do now is paint the tops of my mountains in this picture. So I'll show you the my photo again. I just painted this line that kind of, you know, slopes like that. 
And now I'm going to paint these mountains that uh, where the base hides in behind this horizon line, we'll call it. So I'm using gray to mimic the gray mountains. So these are the Dolomite Mountains. I've talked about them in actually quite a few videos in the past. They're just these gorgeous towering mountains that look so mean when you're up close. So they kind of go like this and then they start sloping down and there's some more in the distance there. But that sort of fades away. And so I'm just fading that gray out and I'm going to start painting the green that comes up into it, kind of swoops into these cracks and corners. <clears throat> but this green is a lot more like a warm, a warm green, so I am going to add warmer hues in there like that kind of rinse my brush out a little bit to extend the the mountains in the background there that kind of tuck in between or in behind. And these, I'm going to just try and smooth it out against the horizon. Sort of like that. This is just the first layer, so even if it doesn't look that great, we can fix it up later. We're just trying to plot the general gist of what's happening here um i'm not really liking it so far honestly my proportions are totally off but we'll see what happens it is only the first layer so i want to start getting some shadows in these mountains and Okay, it looks like the shadows are over here, so the sun is coming from this side. Which is good, because that's where I like painting my shadows. I don't know, it just because I'm right-handed, maybe it's just more natural for me. We can even add some black details for the shadows. That might help us a little bit. Just want to be wary that you're not, you know, putting so much that it's like a stark contrast. That might have been a little too much there. And we can uh, pick up some green mixed with black and start adding these details down here. So this is this section down here is basically just like hundreds, if not thousands of itty bitty trees growing 
uh, pines mostly or sorry I should say conifers some people have been getting quite upset that I use the word pine tree so much um, I'm sorry I'm sorry if that bothers you that much it's I know that not all conifers are pine trees I get it there's spruce there's juniper like there's so many cypress is that another kind I don't know I'm not a botanist I, I don't study this stuff I just use the term pine tree across all my paintings because that is the word or the term that people most use to identify that type of conifer or like conifer trees in general. They just call them pine trees. And if that's the case, then why wouldn't I use that word in my titles and, and when I'm talking? Like if that's a key word that's going to get me more exposure and I'm not doing anybody any harm, like I don't think... Most people don't care if I call a, a spruce a pine tree. I don't know. I just think people focus on things that don't matter. They have it too easy in life. So they start making problems up. But anyways, you can call your tree a freaking Oompa Loompa if you want to. Nobody's going to stop you. Power to you. But the reason why I use pine tree, I already said, it's because it's a keyword that gives me more exposure. So that's taking a little bit better shape there than it was before. Like, I was getting a little worried there. Like, what is happening with these? Now I'm going back in with, like, a lighter green just trying to fill in those gaps <clears throat> okay, and this whole section is also going to be like what we just painted with those uh, dotted lines. So again, I'm combining my green with black. And I actually got, I got this thing from somebody. And I'm going to try... I don't even know what this is actually used for because the person that gave it to me like paints rooms professionally. Like they just had this and they didn't need it anymore. So please don't laugh at me if this is 100% not the use for this paintbrush. It kind of did the job. It, it got us started. But I still have to go back in there and add some dots. But it laid down like the background. Actually not, not that bad at all. And I'm going to go back over here where I already filled in the gaps just to define some of those darker dots again because I, when I went over it with the lighter green, it kind of blended everything into this lighter pigment. So I am going to add some more darker dots.
So this part over here, um, I do need to fade it out into the gray. So that kind of, it's what I tried to do there. Uh, that'll do, I guess, for that, that section there. I actually, I'm just going to quickly go over with gray some of these mountain tops. Okay, I'm not going to do this section because I'm afraid I'll ruin it. Actually, yes, I will. <laughs> That's fine. I also didn't put clouds in. But you know what? It, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as the picture, you know? It's fine. So the other thing, this field looks extremely flat. Obviously that's not ideal. Um, so I'm gonna pull out whatever this is again, because it seemed to <clears throat> do the job. Ooh, yes, oh my gosh. That is creating these really thin, like grassy features. When I drag it across the page instead of dabbing it, look how much texture that added. Okay, just gonna pick up some more paint. Whoops, that was not my intention. Do. want some darker I want this section to be darker because that's usually the foreground it looks nicer if it's darker but this brush uses a lot of or like it picks up a lot of pigment but it doesn't disperse a lot <clears throat> I really miss my my old green, that was a good green, because this one I have to keep warming up. It looks too blue for my liking. That does the job for now. I'm just going to fix this uh, section up. There we go. And I'm going to go in with my brush manually here and just add some more darker details at the bottom. Some blades of grass and whatnot. I'm debating whether I should do anything else with that. I'm a little bit lazy. I don't really feel like it, so I'm gonna leave it. And hopefully when we put the fence in, we can adjust it if it doesn't look good then. Um, okay, so this next part is what's going to hopefully make this entire thing truly come together. We're gonna add the fence post. So you're welcome to pencil it in for yourself first. Um, it looks like I have a fence post that actually ends about here and goes up to about here. So like that and then the next one I'm sitting on. I'm not going to paint myself in this picture. So the bottom is raised, but the top will stay the same height 
as this one. This is how you can achieve great perspective. I kind of went over this in a winter painting. And then every subsequent post that you paint, the further it goes away, the closer it will be together and the shorter it will be. But always make sure you keep the top height the same and just adjust for the bottom height. So the next one is here and it's like way closer. Something like that. And then there's another one there. And then it's sort of this fence seems to curl around. So there's another fence post there. Another one there. And then I don't know, it just disappears. So I've got brown on my paintbrush mixed with a little bit of black and God knows what else. <laughs> I don't rinse my brushes very well. I mix a bunch of colors and it all seems to work out in the end. So no worries. You also want to make your fence posts lighter. I mean, generally you'd want to make them lighter as you fade them into the distance. I don't think I have the patience to do that. I'm also making mine kind of wonky looking. Okay, and then it looks like, so it's one long plank that cuts across these two. Um, so it kind of goes like this. Off of the paper. And then the next one is in the middle and goes off of the paper. And same with this last one. And obviously the, the closer they are to the viewer, so this side, they're going to be a little bit larger. And then the next set sort of like that and then the next set like the further that you go the less precise you really need to be kind of goes like that so that kind of tied the painting together a little bit I'm just going to pick up some more black and darken these posts that are closest to the viewer. <clears throat> like that. Now I would really like to add some snow because snow always makes these things really come together. But this is very clearly a not a winter scene, so I can't add snow. Um, but what, I guess we could add some nice meadow flowers. There, honestly, there is snow in my picture. Like, all these little white details that you see, like this, 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 that's all snow. But, you know, what can we do? Um, if I add snow in this, everyone's going to be confused. So, instead I'm going to take some bright yellow and some acrylic white maybe and add some little meadow flowers growing which in the summer I'm sure there are beautiful flowers that grow there
So yeah, here I'm just taking white acrylic paint and dotting <clears throat> some random dots in places. Make it look like there are flowers. growing in the field. Okay. So another thing I want to add is just some more blades of grass overlapping the fence post. So they'll start at the base here. Instead of snow, we'll just have the blades of grass that grow at the base because the lawnmower can't reach that area. So I'm using my size one, but um, just any round brush with a pointed tip will do the job here. All right, so all that's left to do in this painting is to peel off the tape to reveal hopefully clean borders and you're all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It kind of looks similar. <laughs> Mine's a lot more green, but you know what? That's okay. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like on this video, and I might add this reference photo to my Patreon account if you want to use it to uh, paint your own version. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next 